Jo, and today I'm going to tell you about my trip to Hemingway's house in Key West, Florida. I can't believe it's been a month now since I went to Florida, and it was just amazing. But I'm not going to tell you all about my trip because it's boring, but one day I went to Hemingway's house in Key West. I'd never been to Key West before. That was an experience in and of itself, but I just could not wait to go to Hemingway's house. Oh my gosh, I was so excited I could hardly sleep the night before we went. So Hemingway's house, it looks like this, it's yellow. It is gorgeous. There are two little cats on this. I don't know if you can see them. There's one right there and then looking backwards. Is it over here? Nope, it's up there. There and there. Because Hemingway is famous for his polydactyl cats. Polydactyl cats have an extra digit. Cats usually have five digits on their front paws and four on their back. Well, polydactyl cats have an extra one and it's adorable. They look like little mittens. Here is one of the famous uh, photos of a Hemingway cat. Look at his little paws. They are adorable. This is taken in, in Hemingway's um, office or writing studio which is above what is now the bookshop at the Hemingway house. A sea captain on a boat gave Hemingway a polydactyl cat, his first one which was called Snow White. And all of the cats that now live at Hemingway's house are descendants of that first original polydactyl cat. There are around 50 polydactyl cats at Hemingway's house and around a dozen kittens at the time. That's what the, the guy that worked there told us. I was just so excited about the cat. You are not allowed to pick them up, but you can pet them and they are the most friendly cats. They just lay everywhere and you just go up to them and they sleep and you pet them and they don't even care. They're so friendly and probably the most loved cats in like the entire world. I just loved them. Okay, so I was just going crazy about Hemingway's cats. That, it was just, I loved it. I love cats. All right, so Hemingway's house. It was originally built between 1849 and 1851 by Aza Tift, who was an architect on a, a ship. And um, his family occupied it for several years, then they abandoned it. And Hemingway, on a trip to Key West, in 1928 saw the house it was abandoned and boarded up he ended up buying it in 1931 for eight thousand dollars in back taxes from the city of key west eight thousand dollars wow um it is approximately 16 feet above sea level and the second highest point on the entire island of key west and it doesn't it's not like on a hill or anything 16 feet above sea level is barely above sea level there is furniture that was Hemingway's and his wife Pauline's and the house is just gorgeous. Now I did hear, I didn't take the tour because there were quite a few people and the tours were very large, probably around 30 people per tour. So I was worried that I wouldn't be able to hear everything or I'd be that annoying person raising my hand and saying you're wrong because sometimes I'm quite like Sheldon Cooper and I'm very socially awkward and annoying. I did hear a tour guide saying that there had been bookshelves surrounding the walls in Hemingway's bedroom. For whatever reason, they were taken down and there were some of the bookshelves reassembled in the hallway with a scattering of books that had belonged to him on it and covered with like plexiglass. So it wasn't exactly like Hemingway left it. Hemingway lived in the house with his second wife, Pauline, and their two children, Patrick and Gregory. They lived there from 1931 until 1940. In 1940, Hemingway divorced Pauline and immediately remarried his third wife and moved to Cuba. Pauline and the boys stayed on in the house until Pauline died in 1951. And some of the furniture is hers that she brought from France because they met in Paris when he was with his first wife, Hadley, because this is how Hemingway rolls. They call him Papa Hemingway for a reason. He was not the most upright, faithful husband, that's for sure. 
but it was a wild and crazy time. I mean, I love the Lost Generation. I I just I love I love that era. I love the Lost Generation, and there's just something about Hemingway. I love his sparse writing, his very cut down sentences. And I didn't want to get into this whole big debate about Hemingway. This is about my trip to Hemingway's house, which I also went to Sloppy Joe's. And there is a picture of Papa Hemingway on my shirt. There's a bigger one on the back. Um, we saw Sloppy Joe's. We also went to Captain Tony's and just wandered around Key West. And I just couldn't believe Hemingway. Hemingway had been there. Hemingway walked those streets because it's not like Key West has changed a whole lot. Of course now they have electricity and plumbing otherwise I wouldn't have been there. But it was just amazing and I loved it. Um, okay so his house was vacant from the time Pauline died until about 1961 when Bernice Dixon bought it for $80,000 and lived there until 1964. She um, moved into the guest house and opened the main house as a museum. Later she moved to one of the lower keys and her family actually still runs the museum. So it's not run by Hemingway's estate or anyone in Hemingway's family. It's run by Bernice Dixon. She wanted it to be a tribute and a museum about Ernest Hemingway. So. I think that that's great that she did that and it is still today the largest single residential property in Key West. Now I believe from looking at pictures the uh, estate has gotten smaller because there are some things that were located where there is now a house or something. But the house is still there, it is amazing, it is beautiful, the grounds are gorgeous. There is the infamous swimming pool, which Hemingway had put in. It was a modern marvel at the time because they had to dig into coral and it was just a, a big saga in and of itself. And it ended up costing, I believe, $20,000 in 1930s dollars. I don't even know how much that is today, but it's a ridiculous amount. Um, so I got this little, my little Hemingway house. I also bought this print, which is gorgeous. And my postcard, I also got a couple pencils that say, Ernest Hemingway Museum, Key West, Florida, because I am such a big dork. Also, you can rent his house for weddings and events. I am so having my 40th birthday party at Hemingway's house. It might just be me and the cats because I really want to run around and pet the cats and just play with the cats. But if you're lucky, maybe I'll invite you. So there we go. You have something to look forward to in roughly seven years. My birthday party, Hemingway House, Key West, Florida. September. So keep that open. You know, mark it on your calendars. Start planning now. That was my experience at Hemingway's house. It was amazing. I just, I could have spent the entire day there, honestly. It was amazing. So if you are ever in Southern Florida, I highly recommend going to Hemingway's house. If you've been to Hemingway's house, let me know down below so we can talk about it. I just can't shut up about it. And I will talk to you later. Bye.